Gobble, gobble, who doesn't love a good turkey dinner? Thanks so much for tuning into this amazing episode. Today we're gonna do an 18 pound turkey. It's gonna be a three part series. I'm gonna show you how to use all the leftovers and we're also gonna make a soup. So you gotta stay tuned for some future episodes. It's gonna be amazing. You got a pre-made potato uh, stuffing here that's consisted of uh, mashed potatoes, breadcrumbs, onions, summer savory. I'm also gonna beer inject this turkey and we're gonna throw it in the oven at 350 for roughly six hours. We're gonna slowly reduce the heat and we're gonna be monitoring it and basing it. So, the turkey's been washed. I know that's sort of a controversial thing. We wash it. Washed, trimmed. Oh. So we got this bad boy sitting here right there. Like I said, 18 pound bird. And we're just gonna start to stuff it here. So we're gonna get that all in there. Now the amazing thing about turkey is at this time of the year, which is in the fall here in Canada, uh, turkeys go on sale for about a buck a pound. Now you're never gonna find better value, in my opinion, for how much you can do with, in this case, this 18 pound turkey. So I absolutely love it, because there's very, very little waste. So if anything falls down into your pan, no big deal. The other thing I'm gonna talk about as well, nice little piece of kit, they're only about 15 bucks. Little turkey lifter, pretty slick, especially when your turkey's cooked. So, the bird is stuffed. So I'm gonna actually spin this around so you can see. She's, she's jammed pretty full there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook the neck. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna beer inject this turkey. I know, super unorthodox, but it's the way we do it and I love it. So, I've got an injector here. And what I found is throwing the beer in a shot glass helps me um, not waste much. So we'll do a big draw there, and then we're gonna ram that right in there. And just slowly inject it. Pull that out slow. Now, it doesn't really matter what kind of beer you use. In this case, I'm just using a, a light beer there. So we'll inject those two sides. Now, I know it's tempting to want to finish that beer, even though it's the morning, but hold on. We're gonna pour it over top whenever we're finished. So it's time to hit it with some salt and pepper and some summer savory. So, pretty generous amount of, of salt. Try to get it all over the bird. We'll do the same thing here with the pepper. Now you always gotta keep in mind too, whatever's falling off here, no big deal, because we're gonna make it a phenomenal pan gravy with all the drippings. That's why I'm gonna add some water here to bring our level up as well as pour that beer over the turkey. So that's gonna start the basis for an amazing, amazing gravy. So now we're just gonna hit it with some summer savory. And again, we wanna be pretty liberal with this stuff. If I would be guessing here, which as you can see, I'm not measuring, I would say three to four tablespoons. Okay, so we've got uh, our beer about three quarters of a can, and we're just gonna, so I know this is wiping off some of the stuff we just added, but that's okay too, because I'm just gonna add a bit more. Okay, add some salt and pepper. And now we're just gonna top it up with roughly four cups of water. Okay, I'm probably gonna add another two cups. There we go. Oh, there's a little residual beer. So, ready to go in the oven, 350. About every hour, uh, I'm gonna baste it and check it, and we're gonna cover it, throw it in 350. All right, we're gonna throw this in. You'll see here we took out the top rack of the oven to make space for that to go in. One hour later. One hour's gone by. We're gonna pull the turkey out, have a look at it, take the lid off, give it a baste. Ultimately, we wanna to get to a perfect cook temperature internally, 165. Obviously, after an hour, we're not gonna get there, but let's see how it looks so far. Looking good. Oh, that was a bust. All right, so we'll just give her a little baste. One hour later. Hour number two, let's have a look. Okay, you'll see here that the um, 
meat is starting to pull away from the bone here. The legs tend to cook the quickest. So what I'm gonna do for that is I'm just gonna drape a little bit of aluminum foil over the top to make sure that it doesn't dry out. But in the meantime, we're gonna give it a quick baste. You can see we're starting to get some beautiful color here. Just gonna carefully and gently cover those legs. One hour. Three hours in, see how it looks. Just gonna gently move this. You can see that did definitely protect our chicken legs, or turkey legs, sorry. Normally we would start to turn down the temperature, but I think I'm gonna give it another hour. And normally keep an eye on the uh, breastbone and uh, the center of the turkey to see when it starts to pull away, and then we can reduce the heat. But it's definitely looking super, super nice. One. Four hours. Let's pull it out and have a look. Full glass is fogged up. So you can see the leg, the two legs are really starting to pull away here. So it's looking pretty good. I think we're gonna crank down the temperature here and just finish this off. So I'm gonna turn down the temperature here, put it down to 300 and just finish that off. A little longer than a few minutes later. Turkey's out of the oven. Four hours, 45 minutes. You'll see here that I had just gently put some foil on that. And look at the color we managed to get here. Beautiful. So, my plan now is to carefully lift this turkey out, put it on a cookie sheet, and then we're gonna make a phenomenal pan gravy from all those drippings that we worked so hard for. So, again, what I showed you at the beginning of the video, this amazing turkey lifter. I'm gonna just try to hold it there for a minute or so to let all that juice sort of run out. And then I'm just gonna transfer that over to here. And then I'm gonna just drape my foil back over top of it. Okay, so we got our pan drippings boiling here. It's gotta be boiling. So I'm just gonna take a balloon whisk and just sort of scrape down the sides a little bit here, just to loosen everything up. We're gonna strain this when we're done as well. So I've got here a shaker with uh, two cups of cold water. And I, to start out, I put six tablespoons of flour. Now. I always find an experience, if I put the water in first and put the flour on top, it just seems to, to mix better. So what we're gonna do is slowly just start to work that in. And the key is to try to keep your boil going, even though you're putting in a cooler liquid. And we wanna make sure it mixes well, that's why we're putting this in really nice and slow. So every time I do this, it's sort of the gravy consistency. I like to try to get the same, but sometimes I have to do two or three of these um, shakers of flour and water to get it to where I want. So we'll see what we, how we end up doing today. We'll see, we'll let that get back up to a little bit of a boil. All right, there we go. We're getting back up to a boil again. So we'll start working in. Now I already know that this is gonna take another two cups of this uh, flour water mixture. So I'm just gonna let that boil as I work on my, uh, my other mixture. All right, we got a nice rolling boil here now for round number two. So we'll start working that in again and again, scraping all the sides to make sure you get all that good stuff that your turkey gave you. So once I get it to the desired thickness that I want, uh, I usually then start tasting and adding salt and pepper accordingly. Now I do see that I have a couple of little flour chunks there, which is no big deal. Uh, obviously, uh, I didn't shake it up good enough, but I'll get those when I strain my gravy, so I'm not too worried about that. So we'll just finish this off. You can hopefully you can tell by looking, watching this video that it's really starting to thicken up here. So I'm going to say that uh, this is going to be enough of our flour and uh, water mixture. People always ask me, how much salt, how much pepper? 
it, it's all to taste. Really, in a gravy like this, it, if you're gonna be eating gravy, it might as well be good. So liberally add salt and pepper. You can never take it away, but you can always add more. So add some, mix it, taste, add some more. Or be, be good with what you have at the time. So we can tell here, I'm really happy with the consistency here. So now I'm just gonna basically work in some salt and pepper. I should add as well that this gravy, if you don't use it all, it freezes really, really well. In this case here, because I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's gonna be a three-part series. I'm gonna show you what to do with all of these leftovers. I think you're gonna be excited. Okay, I'm gonna give it a taste. I'm gonna try to burn my, not to burn my face off here. Tastes pretty bang on. May add a little tiny bit more pepper and a little bit more salt, but that's your turkey dinner. It's a little intimidating, but really it's not that hard. If you love the video, which I hope you did, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next one. Turkey in the straw, ha ha ha. Turkey in the hay, hey, hey, hey. Roll them up and twist them up a high, tuck a haw, and hit them up a tune called Turkey in the Straw.